So here we are again at the uh, JLC PCB box. Um, so this is the uh, the upper um, card for the controller this time. So in my last video we covered the lower control card, uh, which is this one right here. Um, so again, if you want to see a bit more on that, uh, take a look at my previous video. Um, so this time we're going to look at the uh, upper part of the card uh, that pairs up with this to basically make the uh, full uh, two card controller. So if I go into my uh, box of delights here and see what we've got inside. Um, so again, there's a few bits here that I will be introducing later on, um, but if we get rid of these, get rid of a few of these, uh, what I should have here is the, uh, what's that, that's the upper controller card, brilliant, so that's the one which we want. So again, there's uh, five in each of these packs, um, so again, if I've uh, got plenty of spares or if something went wrong, I could redo it, uh, but hopefully not, and generally these, these are all good quality so even though you've got five and therefore if one is uh, not very good you can you can just go for another one these have all been really good quality um, so let's take that out um, so here we go so that's the uh, that's the card ready to go um, so what we've got this time is uh, we'll just as before I mean I'm not going to video this because uh, I'm sure you're sick to death of looking at it now uh, but connectors up at the back uh, diodes in each of the places where diodes need to go LEDs down the front and then the intercard connectors over here um, and these ones will be soldered on the reverse side this time because we obviously want the connectors to go down to the lower card uh, with this one being the upper card so that just means that we'll just have to solder them in the reverse and that's the nice thing with these PCBs it's easy to do that because uh, you can solder them for either side. I mean, other than that it's probably not much to say about this card so I think we'll probably jump straight into uh, fast forwarding to the point where all the bits are soldered in. So let's do that now. Okay, so here we have the upper controller card all soldered up and ready to go. Um, so just a quick tour, so if we just come down the front here, I'll try and keep this uh, all nice and steady. Uh, we've got the uh, 80, 08, 10, 12 and 14 lines on the left. Uh, so basically this is the abort 8, 10, 12 and 14 uh, that will go off to the sequencer to tell it how long the instruction uh, needs to be. Uh, in the middle there we've got uh, BTM, bus to memory, memory read, memory write. And then the last one there is the immediate to bus, which is uh, all about taking those uh, last five bits of the um, opcode and just getting them onto the data bus. Um, so that's used for the set AB instruction. Uh, finally there, and then we have the F2, F1 and F0, and that's basically the operation code for the ALU that will be passed down to that. So not a great deal of LEDs on the upper card, uh, certainly the, uh, nowhere near as many on the lower card. But still quite a bit to do up here. Um, so if we're looking further up the card, uh, first of all we have the ALU block here, so this will uh, handle the ALU operation. Uh, behind that we've got the set AB, and in the top right we've got the all important fetching increment, and this is the one that will operate on at the start of every instruction, so every instruction will always have these firing, uh, and this will basically make sure that you move the program counter on uh, after loading the current instruction into memory. Um, again, there are some empty spaces here, so we've got the uh, store and load and the increment XY, and these are both commands that will come later on. Uh, so I will we'll cover these later on, but uh, the store and load basically allows you to uh, take a value from the registers and put it into memory and vice versa. And increment XY, well that does what it says, it allows you to increment the XY register all in one operation. Uh, other things of note on this card, uh, so we've got the connectors here. Uh, you notice in this case they're what would look like to be on the wrong side, uh, but the reason for that basically is that if we look on the other side, uh, that's because they're here on the bottom side. And that's basically so that then you can put some pins in this and this will mate with the uh, appropriate connectors on the uh, on the lower card, which I'll quickly, quickly bring that into shot now, if I can get hold of it. There we go. Um, so they all basically mate with these ones here, so like that. And they'll basically mate into those, uh, and that then makes your uh, your double height card. So if I try and do my camera work here, uh, they'll basically end up mating like that, one on top of the other. And we'll come back to those as well. I'll, what I'll do is I'll connect those together in my next video and give them a try all together. Let's stick that out of the way for the moment. And then back to the card. Uh, up at the back, you've got the uh, connectors. So uh, you've got the uh, pulse bus at the top right here, uh, and that's that's only comes well the only cards that use it are the controller and the sequencer. Um, so that basically comes down here and that's got your pulses from A uh, all the way up to T, I think it is. Um, next on here you have the CI bus, uh, sorry no, the OP bus, so that's the operation bus and that's where basically the uh, the current uh, command class will come through, so that's where it will say whether it's a go-to instruction or a set AB or a move 8 and so on. Uh, the next one here then is the 
CI bus this time. Uh, so this is where the uh, instruction, 8-bit uh, instruction code comes through. Uh, but also on the uh, C bus, the control bus, that's where we uh, push out the ALU function code. And uh, that's also where the ALU condition register values come in. Uh, those actually will go uh, straight off down to the lower card. So if we get zoom in here, got basically the, um, the sign carry is zero, not zero. And uh, here's the uh, four diodes that uh, that just make sure that signal can't backfeed back into the um, back into the condition register because that actually would uh, alter the value if it did backfeed. Uh, I think that's all for this card. So uh, so again, now we're just going to need to get that into a rig, uh, a test rig, and then we can give it a quick test, make sure those functions work okay. So here's a quick tour again of the uh, test setup, and uh, just like it was on the lower card, it's uh, quite a tangle of wires again. Um, so as before, I've got the uh, powering coming in down here, and uh, then that goes off to the card. Now luckily this time, actually, this card does actually have a power connector, whereas the bottom one didn't, so uh, they come into exactly where you'd expect. Um, so that's good, that's one thing that's quite nice and neat. Um, next up then on here, we have the, um, uh, the pulses, A to E, and I've also got the set AB and ALU instruction lines. And these just go off through this connector here, and then they're just wired out. So the pulses are going over here into the pulse bus here uh, and the other two lines are going out into this one up here there and going into down here uh, which is actually the um, op bus uh, so I'll quickly show a, a, a picture up here of what the, what the actual lines are on the back of this card uh, but basically you've got uh, pulse uh, then the op bus operation bus then the uh, control and instruction bus over there and then finally you've got the power connector at the back all out of focus there we go uh, at the back there somewhere there sorry I'm difficult to uh, point and uh, focus um, so that's that uh, then over here then we've got the instruction register so basically got sorry, the instruction value going from I0 to I7 uh, so again that's going out here wide over to here and that's basically the uh, going into the I part of the CI bus so that's where the instruction comes in Again, I haven't got all pins set on there because we only need a, uh, we only need the first. How many have we got here? Uh, we've got um, yeah, we've got six of those, which should be fine because the top two aren't used for either of these instructions. Right, so that's that. Um, coming over to the card itself, uh, as you saw earlier on the completed cards, there's the front of it. Um, so we've got a few LEDs there, but we haven't got all the LEDs we need. Uh, particularly when it comes to things like uh, whether we're loading the program counter, the instruction register and so on. So we need to know all about those. Um, so actually what I've got is I've pulled out my other board down here. And I basically put wires in from each of these bar graphs. And then, because the only way I can get at these, is I've had to use the connectors underneath and basically put all the, all the pins into there for the required outputs. And there's a little label down here as well that reminds me uh, which one's which, so I can make sure the right value is coming through. Uh, other than this, there's nothing really on this board, just the power coming in uh, over there, uh, which just piggybacks on the back of these connectors over here. Um, that's nearly everything. I think just the last one that needs an explanation is this one, which is the uh, condition load line. Uh, this comes over here because actually I've run out of LEDs over there. Uh, and what I'll do is uh, when I want to prove that this has got the right signal on it, I can just tap it onto uh, one of these over here and just make sure then that it lights up this bar over here. So that should be enough to give this a test. Um, when I put the two cards together, the upper and the lower cards, it'll be much easier to test these, but again, I do want to test them separately first, just make sure they're working. Because sometimes when you put them together, you can have a fault that only shows itself when they're both together. Um, but we'll come to that next. All right then, so uh, let's give these instructions a, uh, a try then. So, uh, just going to a quick look on my uh, Relay Computer website. So that's relaycomputer.co.uk. We can find more information on these things. And uh, looking at my uh, controller design post here, where this lists out basically the uh, the three instruction types. Um, so we've got the set AB, we've got the ALU, and then the uh, the move eight instruction here was on the uh, lower card, which was covered in my last video. Uh, but this is the upper card, so it's got those two there. Uh, what I also want to test as well is these fetch and increment. Um, so I'm going to take a quick look at those as well. Uh, and what I'll do is fetch and increments die by far the easiest, so we'll go for that. Uh, then I think we'll go for set A, B, and then A or U. Good thing is that none of these instructions are particularly complicated, uh, so it should be easy enough to test. 
Um, so I'll bring up a, a larger version of this on screen right now, uh, but we'll start with the, um, let's start with set AB. So if I go for the larger chart here, this also has the fetch increment cycle. And as I said before, basically, this is included on every instruction, starts with the fetch and increment cycle. So it'll fetch the instruction into the instruction register, and then it moves the program counter on for the next instruction. So uh, let's quickly power on. Again, um, turn that back off again. Uh, so yeah, normally if I powered off, powered on again, uh, you wouldn't hear anything at all. So there's no clicks or anything. Uh, now what you're about to do without choosing an instruction is I should be able to get this fetch increment cycle because this will operate again as I said no matter what instruction you're doing. Um, so if I've got neither the set AB nor the OU set, this should operate. So if I go for pulse A first, and what we're looking for here is the select PC and the memory read. So we've got the memory read right there and the select PC down here, uh, which is good. Okay, that's exactly what I expect. So now if we go for the B pulse, which is here, um, those two now are joined by the load instruction and load increment, sorry, load instruction register and load increment, uh, which are the next two here lit up. So you've got all three there. So that's good, that'll be the A and B. So they would then come back off again. So B will come off and then A will come off. And then the next instruction is C and D. So if I bring C on, uh, C is supposed to bring select incrementer on, which is the next light, which is exactly what I want. And then the next one, D, will load the PC, which again is the light there. So that's basically the fetched increment cycle. Um, select the PC, read the memory, into the instruction register and into the incrementer and then select the increment uh, and load the PC to move the counter on. Uh, what I should find here is if I choose any of the other settings, uh, so going up to pulse E, uh, nothing else operates because again uh, we haven't selected an instruction type, so set AB and ALU just put right out of it. Right, so if we go to the main part of set AB, if I now select the operation you hear a click which is basically this set of uh, relays activating. Um, so what would I expect to see now? So here it's actually the D and E pulses. So if I go straight for the D pulse, uh, I find that I get the um, the low PC come up, which is fine because that's basically from the uh, fetch and increment cycle. Um, but what I'd expect to see is there is load A, which is coming through there. Um, what I also see as well then is the abort eight line coming up because this is an eight cycle instruction. So as we mentioned on the uh, lower card, uh, the fetching increment cycle will ask at uh, pulse D for do you want me to uh, set the sequencer to abort early? So do you want me to go to 8, 10, 12, 14 cycles? Or if you don't say anything at all, it'll go through to the 424. So that's why it comes up with the 8008 uh, there. Um, if I bring pulse C on, which is the immediate to bus, you can see it lights up there. So the actual order for this instruction would be the immediate to bus will come on first, which basically gates the, uh, the last five bits of the instruction to the data bus. Uh, and um, if the first bit is set, it'll actually uh, set all of the leading bits to one as well, which is how you basically get your negative number. Um, and then on the pulse D then, it would then load that register. And now I've got that on as well. Uh, what we do have on the instruction is uh, the third bit from the left. So bit 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, bit 5 uh, is a destination register. So by default that is the A register, uh, but if I set that you go to the B register. That's what I'm seeing down there. So that's basically flipping between the A register and the B register. And that's it for set AB. That's all there is to that one. So I'll unset all those values. Um, so if I now move on to the ALU one, uh, so again, this one has a, is led by 1000, which is how basically the um, decoder will know that it's an ALU operation. Uh, then the next bit is the destination register, A or D, and then the last three bits then are the function code, which is just paste, placed directly through to the uh, through to the ALU. Right, so for the ALU function, if I uh, pop on that, uh, that operation there, so that's now the ALU relays activated. And if I go for pulse E this time, can hear a click, but nothing's actually lit up, and that's because actually this is where we're using the ALU function. Uh, and if I set the bits, you can see that directly goes to bit 0 goes to F0, bit 1 goes to F1, and bit 2 goes to F2. And that'll basically just activate the ALU to actually push that result out. And of course I can do any combination of those, so if I can bring them on like that, I'll take them off in that order. And whatever you set there will basically just pass straight through to the ALU. Uh, so it's only when pulse D comes on then when something more interesting happens. 
Um, so in this case, again, we've got the uh, low PC coming on from the fetch increment cycle, uh, but we're picking up register A. Again, if I set the um, three, one, two, three, fourth bit, I can set that to be either uh, A or D. So uh, that one there. There you go. So that's bringing D in or A, A or D for the result. Uh, what you can't see here then is the low condition register because I've just run out of LEDs over here. So the condition register should be on this line here. So basically if I tap that over to this so you can see it. If I bring that over to the pin up here, then you should be able to see that there. So that's basically the, uh, the uh, condition load line which basically just load the condition register. Uh, if I knock off the D, should find then that that condition load isn't there which it isn't. Brilliant. Okay, so that is it for those instructions. So I say there is more to that card, but again, I'll in introduce those instructions later on. So um, in the next video, I'll um, I'll basically hook this up with the lower card. So I've got the lower card over here, which uh, you saw in my last video. Uh, so what I'll basically do is I'll uh, put in the pins in these sockets here. Uh, there's a pins in the sockets underneath and basically I can sandwich these two cards together and then what I'll do is I'll give them a quick test together just to make sure that actually all those signals are passing through plus here some of the results like the register A, B, D and a few other values will be visible down here as well so it should be easy to see what's going on, on the from the two cards together and then once that's done basically you can go in the computer and uh, we do need to update the decoder so I do need to quickly rebuild that just to decode the uh, new go-to instruction uh, but other than that, I've got everything needed to do branching in the computer. So the video after that will be basically just show it all. Anyway, that's enough for the moment, so I'll, uh, I'll see you next time.